Now that you have your girls all put together, you can go back in and add some more details to them to dress them up. I'm going to use colored pencils, liquid pearls. You could um, glue on a little bow. I, because she has a belt, I think a bow wouldn't really work here. So I'm going to go ahead and um, not put a bow on that one. I may put a bow on this one. Okay, so dressing them up like here she is. It looks great. I'm going to add this little tiny bow. And I'm not going to glue it to the hanky, but I am going to glue it to the card. But look at how cute that is to add a little bow at the back. So you just kind of want to come in and play and dress them up because that's what you do with paper dolls is we dress them up. And we make them fancy and cute and add little embellishments. And that's what's going to make them super fun and special. So look how cute that is with a bow in the back. Oh, love it. That's so stinking cute. Oops, and it didn't stay. Didn't put enough glue. A little extra. And I'm trying not to get that, get the hanky, because just in case I ever want to take the hanky off, or anybody ever wants to take that hanky off that they can. But there's a little bow on her back. And then on this one, I'm going to go ahead, and since her face is showing, let me move in a little bit closer here. It's very plain. The front of sewing patterns, those old vintage ones, were very monotone in color. And I'm going to go in and add some little touches. I did put some clear gesso over this and let it dry so that it would adhere, the um, colored pencils would adhere. Otherwise, your colored pencils wouldn't, you wouldn't be able to color on top of it. So I did add some some clear gesso. So I'm just going back in with color pencil now and I'm adding in some shading, like some shadow under her neck, a little shadow on her arm, a little shading down her. Just to make it look a little more jazzed up and not so dull from that sewing pattern was really kind of dull. So look at how just that little bit of touch just kind of brings it to life. And I'm taking a white and going right here where the whites of her eyes are. And just sharpening that up a little, making it brighter. Let's see? Brighten it up. And then in her hair, adding some depth with some brown. Where it's already like swooped, where it would be like... Um, waves in her hair. I'm going into that wave with a colored pencil and just darkening it up a little bit. So look at how cute that is. Bringing her to life. I like it. And I think I'm going to add a little tiny bit of yellow. Just around those edges. Just for brightness. Okay. See? Looks cute. And now I'm going to take some um, liquid pearl. It's a pearling pen. And I'm going to make her little pearl necklace here. So put some dots to make that pearl necklace look real. And the one on her earring too. Let's give her some pearls. I love it. And I don't want to touch that until it dries, but look at the pearls. When it dries, those will look like real pearls. Cute. And I think for these spots in between here that I left on her that I didn't cut out, I think I'm going to go ahead and color those in. I'm going to just take a Prismacolor marker and go into those spots underneath her arms without getting any on the hanky. And just color those in so they're not so white. That's better. Much better. 
I like that better than the white showing behind. So just playing around and adding some little fun touches and brightening up the face and adding some shadows and doing a little fun things, sewing or gluing on some embellishments like lace and different things. Um, you know, you could add a little, a little jeweled something to her hair. I might do that like she's got jewels in her hair. But just decorate them how you want them because they are your dolls. And then around the background of the girl, I'm going to go ahead and take some Stabilo, black Stabilo, and just go around that edge and then blend it out. You can use your finger. I'm using kind of a scrubber brush. Be careful not to get any on my hanky. And this is just to bring her forward a little bit and make it make it stand out a little bit more. You don't have to do this, but it's just preference. I'm just going up to that edge and blending it out and adding just a little bit of a shadow. I don't think I'm going to go around the top of her head, but I am going to put a touch down here. And you know, you don't have to do it the way I do it. This is just an example. There. See how that just kind of makes her pop off the card a little bit. So I'm going to do the same thing to this one. And then we'll go ahead and move on to Place the back. in your book where you're going to put this layout. And I'm going to do it on the back side from uh, our page that we did. This is my um, articulated doll. I call her Cookie. And I am going to put it on the back of that. So I already have my nice thick sets on this side. And I'm going to add three pages together. Mod Podge here and here to make a set over here for my layout. Uh, watch this background video for some inspiration, then uh, follow along here. So what I've done is I've, in my book, I know where my layout, I want it to be, and I've put my pages together in sets. Um, I don't know about you, but when you are Mod Podging pages together, sometimes they go together just perfectly and super smooth, and sometimes they're like two-year-old children that they just don't want to behave no matter how hard you want them to or for their own best interest. So um, if there are little dips and wrinkles and things, it really doesn't matter because when you finish your layouts, that isn't going to show. So don't get hung up if your pages start to um, get a little bumpy and wobbly in places. So anyway, here is my uh, here are my sets, my two sets that we're going to do this layout on, and I'm going to do it a little bit differently. We've shown some several different ways of doing backgrounds with putting down material, with putting down um, pages out of a magazine, with putting down uh, decorative paper as a background, with using paint as a background this is uh painting and stenciling and this is over um an underpants type layer that you've put down little bits and pieces of book text and paper and then you completely cover it with um paint and use your stencils and things uh, some of it is just paint and so that's what we're going to do here. There isn't a lot of book text because this was the kind of book where you do a lot of writing in it. There's a little bit of text here. Instead of taking the time to cover the whole entire thing with little bits and pieces of paper, I don't really want that to show particularly for this layout for myself. So I'm going to do it just slightly different. Um, this time I'm going to put down a layer of white gesso and I'm just going to um, it doesn't need a whole lot over here but I'm going to use it primarily to cover up the text on this side and I'm going to be doing a lot of um, painting and colors over it and then I'm going to be covering most of the background with things that I'm going to Mod Podge down so this is just going to be a general layer to give it some tooth so it'll hold my paints to cover up things like the um, 
page numbers at the bottom the little page numbers the book text or you know the writing that's at the top the title on that page and then I'm just kind of taking my brush and spreading it along and you know some people might not like this some people might say oh no that can't do it that way it's wrong that's one thing there is no right or wrong in art journaling in altered bookmaking in any of these crafts that you're doing none of it is wrong it's all art you it's your interpretation of how to use the supplies how to make it work for you how to make it look the way you want the end result to look so if you've seen videos with other uh, other people where they say no you have to do it this way and it has to have always has to have a background and it always has to have things glued down to the paper it's it's not that's not correct i mean you can do it any way you want to do it it's your art journal it's your book it's your process this is just inspiration for how you can do it in different ways and how to use your supplies in different ways so i'm just putting down some white gesso and see how that nicely covers that page saves me from having to do all the little torn pieces and put down that um, that base layer when i really don't need it on this particular layout so i'm going to let that dry and then i'll come back and show you what i'm going to do with the colors and the paint okay later on i am going to use some watercolor but to start with i'm going to use acrylic paint these are the colors that I've chosen and I usually do it you see a lot of times that I do a dry brush technique and that makes the um, the paint kind of spreads over the texture of the paper and it just grabs little bits of the paint and it makes it look very marbly and textured this time I am going to do it with a wet brush because I kind of want my paint to spread out so I'm just going to put down some paint and this brush is wet and I'm just going to do a thin layer. Now the reason I'm starting with acrylic paint and not watercolor paint is watercolor will move. So if you put watercolor down on your page and then you um, take something like this where you want to put it on your background and you're going to Mod Podge it down, the watercolor paint is going to react with, with the Mod Podge and it's going to cover over your image. If that's what you want and that's what you want the end result to be, go for it. But if not, then you want to use acrylic paint because once acrylic paint dries, it stays put. Hopefully that makes, makes sense to you. So I'm putting down a layer of acrylic paint. And I'm just going to spread it out. And it doesn't have to be perfect. Um, I want the background to be interesting and creative, but um, so it doesn't have to be completely solid, I guess is what I'm trying to say. It's still, I'm still in that process of making it look washy. And when I'm adding another color, I am going to let this dry 100% completely dry before I add my next color otherwise they will start to combine with each other like if I wanted some greens I could add add yellow now start blending it out but obviously blue and yellow make green and you're going to end up with shades of green instead of simply blue and yellow so I am going to let it dry in between and we'll come back after this dries it's and keep wet it. and you're adding colors you run the risk of mixing colors or ending up with mud a lot of people say you know I was playing around with it and I don't understand why all my colors turned into a big brown puddle of mud it's because they mixed together and they weren't complementary with each other and so you want to be sure that the layer that you put down is dry before you start adding in another one so now I'm going over with some yellow and I'm just being really creative with this I just kind of want you know little bits of yellow here and there little bits of blue here and there we're making this background just kind of fun and interesting because um, I want some color back there, but then I'm going to put a lot of images over it. I want to make this, my, um, my theme on this is I want to kind of make it look like a seamstress 
type page that has all kinds of things that have to do with sewing clothes, sewing dresses, because we made those pretty girls with their dresses. And so I want to just I'll put all kinds of fun things like this cute fold-up paper doll in her neat dress. This kind of an image. I have some material that has um, a body dress form. These images from the inside of the, um, the sewing patterns. I love those images that come from the sewing pattern. So I'm going to put those in my background. So a lot of what I'm doing right here is not going to show. It may or it may not. So I just want to be sure that there's something back there. Just something, just in case a piece of it does pop through. So I'm just adding some paints, letting them dry in between, spreading them together, and making this background just kind of interesting. And I'm doing that over a layer of white gesso that has dried. That gesso makes that paint just really grab, grab well. And I use a file folder, I'm sure you noticed, in between my pages. And that's just to kind of protect the page on the other side so that I don't get um, art material products on a page that I've already finished. a little bit of coral and I'm going to try to stay in the spots that are are dry so it doesn't make mud like I said if it starts to look muddy I will stop and let this dry Just layers of color, swatches, making it interesting. Okay, I like that. So I'm gonna let that dry and then I'll move on. Okay, that's dry and I've gathered together some items. This is gonna be just so cool with so many different layers. Here's material that I had that has uh, dress forms on it. You've seen me uh, use this. I used this on a um, in a little needle book that I created and I actually uh, stuffed it and made a pin cushion out of it inside the needle book. And these images are just so cool and fun. And then I have a paper tape measure that came out of one of those little cheapy dollar store sewing kits that I got at a thrift store or a yard sale. So I'm going to put some of that on there. And uh, this part of the sewing pattern, the tissue paper part that you cut out, look how cool that is. And it's going to be just layers upon layers and it's going to just come to life as I create it. So I'm going to just dig in and get started with putting things down Oops, is it dry enough? It may not be dry enough. Let me dry it a little okay. bit more. I use my heat tool to dry it a little bit more. I usually don't do that because sometimes it can tend to have your um, pages wrinkle a little bit, but I'm just so excited I'm kind of being impatient. So first thing I'm going to put down, I think I really love this um, piece out of the sewing pattern. I love what it says and I love how it says cutting line and front peplum so I'm going to start mod podging things down. I'm going to leave it all in one big piece I think. I don't know. We'll see how it, how it goes. See how it goes. Mod podge. Oh, I love it. And the colors that we put down are showing through, which is kind of fun too. It's great. Okay, I'm going to put a little bit on top. I 
and I don't care if it gets wrinkly I love that look too so it can be I'm kind of swirling it a little so it'll get a little crunchy and wrinkly because I love that look cool okay and I'm going to tear this part that's along the edge we'll stop right there oh that looks great I love it I love it that background is showing through and I love that it says cutting line and the name of the piece okay so now I'm gonna keep adding more things I'm gonna tear some of this part of the pattern as well I love this it says select your pattern pieces and I'm not being specific how I tear it out because they're just gonna go everywhere that's why I say it probably is gonna cover up a lot of this background so that's why I didn't want to put too terribly much effort into that background because it's gonna get covered and then I'm gonna do some stenciling and things over it and some watercolor paint But this is just going to be layered, layered, layered. Let's layer it up. It's going to be cute. I love this the lady who had it made little notes in her handwriting about size and stuff. That's kind of neat too. So this kind of stuff is getting layered, but it's kind of also sort of like focal point as well. It's a little of both. And then I'm going to take this cute image and put it down here. And I realize you may not have some of these items to play with on your pages. You'll have to just find your own unique stuff. They were, these were all from the sewing patterns that I've used for the girls throughout the book. So you probably do have some of this. You'll just have to see what you've got in you with your girls and your patterns and go from there. And I think I'm going to cut her out a little bit more, but oh, I love these and I love the feel of material when you put it down on paper. And I made the edges super grunged, tore them, ripped them, shredded them, left the strings on them. Love that. I love that. And if you don't, then do yours different. Look how cool that is. Oh my gosh. Oops, I don't want to cover cutting line. So maybe I'll put it at an angle even. Have it even go off the page a little bit. That's kind of cool. Oh yeah. And when you put down material, be sure you put a generous layer of Mod Podge underneath so that it sticks really well. So even double up your little layer. And then your material will go down much nicer. See how that just kind of really went down nice. Oh, and I love the strings and the texture. It's so cool. So cool. So fun. This is what I had in mind, and it's coming to life. I love it. Okay, now I'm going to put another one of those up here. This one. I think I'll tip it that way. Oh, 
looks so fun oh my gosh this is exactly what I had in mind you know how you have something in your mind that you want to create in your art journal or your junk journal or your altered book and you know what you want it to look like and then as you do it it just comes together or it turns out even better than what you had envisioned I love that I love that okay so now I'm going to take some of this paper tape measure I think that is really fun this with my paper tape measure and get that to stick down really well look how cute this is oh my gosh it's awesome this matrix turned out to be my favorite page I don't know this book has just been so much fun I've had such a good time doing it and I love how it's come together Every page was fun to create in this book. Okay, so I'm going to use some more sewing pattern images. Is, these patterns are so old, the paper is so delicate is just so dried out and frail I love that kind of paper that is old and crunchy be doing this off camera I thought I could just play and do my thing and then come back and show you but I just thought you might like to see the process of it coming to life taking shape I want that base to show so I'm gonna tear this a bit here so that's why I'm doing it on camera because I thought you'd like to like to come along for the journey This is cute. I think I'll just do the top part. It's the top part of the of the dress that up here kind of at an angle we're just layering it's kind of like doing a collaged background and then on this side I think I'm going to add some more of the tissue paper type go over these images that are already down because they're going to show through that tissue paper oh, just too cool I love that just giving lots of neat layers you can see the image behind but because that tissue paper is nice and thin it's popping that image up where you can still see it see that but yet it says cutting line and back peplum and all that good stuff so that's just way too fun and I think I'm gonna put a little bit of it there too this piece that says center back 
and fold line. That's interesting. I'm going to put that right along this edge. <laughs> Place on straight grain of material is what it says. I love that. So cool. So cute. Making it all crunchy and wrinkly. I don't mind. That's cool. I love that. Okay, that's a good start. I'm going to let that do a little bit of drying. And then we'll come back. I'm going to go look for some more little things that I might want to add. And then we'll come back. Okay, I've trimmed out my girl on the stand. This was a fold-up paper doll. It came out of a magazine. And she's going to go on this side, about here. And then I printed this from Graphics Fairy. And it's a seamstress on her knees um, with her dress form and her pattern. And I printed it onto cardstock. And that one is going to go here. So those are going to go in place there. And before I put them down with Mod Podge, what I'm going to do is I'm taking washers, metal washers, and some Aileen's Tacky Glue. And I'm going to put a washer like right in the middle of that image. I'm going to just put some glue down here and stick this washer in place like that. Just like that. And I'm going to do the same thing over here. I'm going to do it kind of high up on her body. Make sure it fits behind there and you can't see it. That washer is actually upside down. I'm putting the beveled edge towards the picture. I'm going to do is put them in place with their Mod Podge. And you can be um, um, more cautious than this if you prefer and let that glue dry, let that washer dry in place, but I'm not worried about it going anywhere. So I'm going to stick her down where she's going to go and I'm not getting any, um, I'm not getting any Mod Podge on the front of this image because I am going to add some color to that design. Or I could go over it with clear gesso. If you go over it with Mod Podge then you it's really hard for you to try and go over it with markers or colored pencils or anything like that. Um, but if you do go over it with Mod Podge and you still want to do that you can go over it again with some clear gesso and then that will hold your image in place and keep it from um, or actually make it grab whatever medium you decide to use watercolor paint acrylic paint so I'm just kind of pushing that down around where that I'm trying not to smear the ink by moving this around too much where that washer is you just kind of want that washer to be in place and I did go over that so I'm gonna to have to put some clear gesso before I color this but that's okay okay and I'm gonna do the same thing over here so you can't see the washer because it's behind the image This one I'm not coloring, so I'm going to decorate her in a different way. So I don't care if I get Mod Podge over it. I'm kind of making it a little bit wet so I can stick it down really well around that, around that washer. Just that so the washer stays in place underneath there. I 
I know I look like I'm getting a little crazy with my Mod Podge, but I want it to be on here really good. Or really well. Probably the better way to say it. Okay. I think that'll work. I'm gonna let her dry. And this one. Make sure that's down really good. Okay. Perfect. Sticking them down good. Okay. I'm going to let those dry and we'll come back. Okay, I found this cool vintage pair of sewing scissors. These are just images off the internet and I just printed them out on paper. I nice metal thimble and a giant spool of thread with a needle and I'm going to add those images now as well. Okay so I'm going to put the thimble down here. There's a nice spot here for it. It's kind of covering that girl but that's all right. You can still see behind. So now these focals that I'm adding are kind of just creating more of the collage on our background. Layers upon layers. I love doing that. I want that one to be way down in that corner. I don't want to cover that up too much. Perfect. So I'm just Mod Podging those down and this one is going to just go like this and a lot of it is going to end up getting cut off but you're still going to get the gist of it being there. I love it. It's exactly what I wanted. Okay, going to let those dry. These are doing really well. They're about dry, so I'm going to put some clear gesso over this image so that I can add some color to it. And then I'm going to start decorating this image a little bit too. Okay, I'm going to add some of these little tiny flowers. There were flowers on this image that came out of a magazine, but I'm going to add some little three-dimensional flowers to it. I got these little flowers a long, long, long time ago when I used to manage a scrapbook store and they were by EK Success and they were kind of on the Jolie line but I'm not sure if they even make these anymore. They were by EK Success. But I'm just going to add to her flowers like that. Make her a little fancy. And I'm going to add a little bit of trim to the edge of her skirt. So I'm just putting a little line of glue. This is my um, art glitter glue with a nice fine point so it works well for little details like this. just adding some interest and dimension to that page. It's really cute. I like it a lot. Let's see. Okay, and now I'm going to go and uh, color this image. I'm not going to do it on camera. You don't need to see me 
spend a half hour coloring that but I'm gonna add some color to that image and then I'll come back and show you what else I have okay. planned. I have colored that image and I've decorated this and now the next step that I'm gonna do is to take some like a yellow ochre watercolor and I'm going to brush over this lightly with yellow ochre watercolor. The material will pick some of it up and I'm not going to do the whole part, just a little bit. Like toning down that bright yellow corner and adding some interest. When you go over the material it picks up the grunginess. When you go over that sewing pattern it'll pick that up. The crinkles and the pattern. It'll kind of antique down this part of the sewing pattern here. And I'm not being specific, I'm just doing a wash. That spine in the middle was too bright for me, so I want to go over that. I want to be careful going around my girl here because she might bleed a little bit. I don't want her to bleed. And this just kind of tones it down, brings it all together, pulls it all together. Tones down that background slightly. And this is just personal preference. You don't have to do this if you don't have watercolors or you don't like watercolors. I just like how it kind of makes that paper, the sewing pattern paper, a little bit more grungy. It's toning down that really white part of that material that the sewing forms were on, the dress forms. I like it. I like it a lot. It looks really cool. I see that you're kind of getting a glare here. Let me move that light a little. There. That's better. See? I love all that cool interest in the background and then I'm still gonna go over it not done yet I'm still gonna go over it and add a little tiny bit more with some texture before I do my coloring I'm gonna fold these forward and take some scissors and trim off all the excess that hangs over the pages. So everywhere where it hangs over, I'm going to trim that off. I'm going to use this Tim Holtz stencil that looks kind of like a burlap -y type pattern. And I'm using a fluid acrylic in a raw umber, in case you're wondering what color I'm using. And I'm just using a cheap cosmetic sponge. I'm just going to dab it into my paint. Let me zoom out a little bit here. Dab it into my paint and then dab it so it's not real, real heavy on my bra on my cosmetic sponge. And then I'm going to just go in here and add a little interest around that edge. Up in the corner. I don't want it to be heavy. I don't want it to take away from the cool images of that background. It just needs a little bit of something so it's just not so plain. I love that color. Raw umber. It's so pretty. Not 
chocolate brown. It's just kind of kind of pretty. This is exactly what it needed. A little something something. Just using the sponge looks cool too. It kind of just looks like smudges. A little more up here. And that's good to go. And then for the last step, here, let me show you what that looks like. And then for the last step, I'm going to do some stabilo around my focals just a little bit. to make them pop because they are focals so they need to kind of stand out a little bit I like using my little scrubber brush here to get it right where I want it. Cool. Looks cute. Some underneath here. Make that pop. Okay, now the very, very last step. I love how this looks. I'm really happy with how it turned out. And my very last step is to take my hanky girls from the last video. Perfect, it looks good. Okay, last step is to take my little hanky girls and decide which one is going to go on which page. I don't think it really matters. Um, I like the blue over here because then it ties in the blue from the scissors. That's why I chose that with a blue background. So I think I am going to do it like this. Okay, so when you decide where you want your girls to go, you want to find that magnet. And the best thing to do, if you try to glue your magnet to your card and then find your location, your girl may not be where you want her to be. So best, best thing to do, this is my, my take on it, is find the magnet take your other half of the magnet or your magnet and stick it down let it attach to where that washer is underneath the paper then take your Aileen's tacky glue leave the magnet in place right where it's at put your dot of glue 
right on the magnet. Oops, got a little too much. So put your glue on the magnet, leave them in place, and then set your girl where you want her to be. And then we're going to put something heavy, a book, down on these pages and let it dry with them in place. Okay, here are my girls. I love my layout. It's so fun. I love this so much. I can't even tell you how much I love this. It's just turned out so cool. I love the sewing background and all the cool theme. My magnetized girls stick right on here and stick in place my hanky girls you can see pick it up and see that cool background and then just attach her with her magnet and they stay in place way too fun way too fun and then i love their little their little hanky dresses so it just turned out great i hope you enjoyed this and uh the, this was the last Thing for this series for this altered book series for paper dolls and the last thing that we're going to do the last video that I will upload will be how to decorate the cover so stay tuned for that and I appreciate you following along and watching and enjoying this process and I hope that you try it out because it's super super fun so thanks for stopping by art soothes the heart